So, in IWDL, myself, Alexandra, and Patricia, we're very happy to uh, announce that we're launching a call uh, for CLSI projects and practices. And this call actually is really meant to gather inspiring examples of community-led social innovations from across the EU. It is really to promote and give visibility to these local practices and actors. There's no funding, no grants. It's rather to prepare for the launch of a CLSI network that is planned for November 2024 in a CLSI online events. So it's all about social innovation and therefore uh, CLSI is, very, is a specific approach in this vast field of social innovation. Why is it important and what is the value of social innovation? Today we face very complex and overlapping social challenges from climate change to energy poverty to unemployment, migrant transition, etc., that create social and societal needs that are badly met, badly satisfied. There's no answer or answers that are not really satisfactory. Therefore, social innovation aims to respond to these unmet needs by developing and implementing new solutions. Social innovation is thus problem solving, but not only, it's also transformative and it can create sustainable systemic positive changes and social value for all. So what is social innovation more concretely speaking? Opposite to other types of innovation, which are led by growth, benefit, profits. The primary goal that defines social innovation is to generate a positive social change for the people benefiting from the intervention. And the rationale where all starts is social needs that are not satisfied. So new solutions are produced to answer these needs that can take the shape of products, services, practices, models. One characteristic is that they are collectively and collaboratively produced, involving a wide range of stakeholders ranging from civil society, public, private sector, academics, etc. And one key element is also that it is always user-centered User-centered sen user means that the end beneficiaries are involved and empowered from the beginning to the end to be sure the solution is fitting their needs. Social innovation is also highly contextualized, same challenges, different solutions. And it's often designed and tested at small scale because it's risky, it's a new adventure, and uh, before it is scaled up, uh, it's tested small. In this vast field, Com what we call so community-led social innovation means that we are focusing on a specific uh, kind of stakeholders, which are not the public sector, not the private sector or academics. It is really those social innovations that are designed, developed and implemented by local communities. It is really from the local community to the local community. And that involves the whole range of local actors that are concerned by the social needs and that together think, develop and prioritize new solutions. They have a potential for being scaled up and transferred in other contexts under the condition they are successful. And the last information about this call is that it's wide open. There's no specific topic, no challenge. It can really range from migrant integration, need social inclusion, homelessness, long-term care, rural areas, urban areas, whatever, it's all open. And I pass the floor to Patricia, who will explain the rest of the call. Thank you, Amel. Now let me tell you why you should apply. Firstly, it's your chance to get visibility at European level. It is an incredible opportunity to showcase what you do best, with your credibility, attract new partners for sell your vision, and I can help spread your impact. Moreover, you will have access to sessions and resources that will empower your team and improve your operations. And lastly, by joining us, you will contribute to strengthening the voices of local actors in policy making. Your insights and space are crucial, and this platform can amplify them to make real change. Now let's go over how to submit your application for the LF Call for Practices. First, mark your calendars. The deadline to apply is 16 of September 2024 at 5 p.m. Brussels times. You will notify about the selection by the 11th of October. The submission format is entirely online via the provided link at the EU survey. It's quick and easy, so you need to worry about mailing in documents. This opportunity is open to projects implemented across the 27 countries of the European Union. If your project operates in one or more of these countries, you are also eligible. 
And when we encourage admission in English, we understand that this might not be possible for everyone. So applications in any EU official language are welcome, but please include an executive summary in English to ensure that we fully understand your project. And now let's go quickly over what's needed in the submission form in the EU survey. First, we need to understand the local community and the involvement of local stakeholders in your project. Secondly, really important, please explain what are the social challenges and admin needs in your project. Outline the innovative solutions you've developed, highlight what makes it innovative compared to existing solutions, and what evidence you got. Summarize the results and evaluation and how users and the community are involved in them. Do you have any plans for scaling up or for transferring your innovation? Please tell us and uh, how you span your impact. Lastly, specify the sources of funding that has made the project possible. Now I give the floor to my colleague Alexander to explain all you need to know about the evaluation process. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I will now uh, explain to you how we are going to assess uh, and evaluate uh, your proposals. Um, obviously, we are following very straightforward principles uh, of transparency, fairness, uh, impartiality, and confidentiality when we are going to review uh, your proposals. Um, the process will follow uh, these uh, steps. We're going to do a qualitative assessment. Um, we're going to run this by two experts within ADL. Um, obviously, if the scores are not too different, uh, one of them is going to be able to consolidate the assessment. Um, if the scores differ too much by more than 20 points, we will appoint a third expert uh, to define a consensus report. Um, the scoring, the maximum score you will have seen is 100, but we will basically consider admissible any proposal that scores uh, 65 or above. And um, the evaluation criteria, you will see in the call we have four criteria within which we have sub criteria. Um, we have social innovation, local community involvement and achievements as being our main, uh, our strongest criteria and uh, the scalability aspects uh, with 10 points. Within social innovation, what we want to see is how you explain to us how this practice or how this project uh, is meeting uh, local social needs. What were the novel uh, aspects uh, in this practice or in this project and how relevant to the topic it is? Um, we're obviously going to look closely at how the local community was involved. So how, how was the local community participating? Uh, was this a new cooperation? How was the cooperation managed? And was there some sort of networking involved? And how, do you, how did you make that happen? Obviously, we're going to look at the achievements, the results, but also how you evidence those results, those, this, this evidence, how you evidence the achievements. Um, and then, uh, as Ahmel said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, social innovation is all about looking forward, looking about potential for scalability, potential for replication. So this is also something we're going to look at. Uh, do you foresee, have you foreseen this? As this does this have replication and scalable uh, scale potential? Um, and is there any planning for transferability or scalability? So this is the end of our presentation. We are obviously happy to answer any question you have about our call. We will be publishing our answers publicly on our website. You can write to elif at adol.eu. You have the uh, email address here on your screen. And we, we very much uh, thank you and look forward uh, to receiving hopefully a lot of your inspiring practices and projects uh, in community-led social innovation. And thank you so much again.